Bill and Coach Fox was telling us about your relationship with Leah. Uh, how did that make you a better quarterback? What were some of the things you learned from him that you could apply to this year as a full-time starter? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing, you know, over my two years playing with Talia, I think the first thing is, you know, when he when I first transferred in here, he welcomed me with open arms. I think the first thing that, you know, allowed for me to do was, you know, know that, okay, I can push him right as a backup. You know, obviously in the quarterback room, only one place it can get, you know, a little tricky sometimes, but, you know, we always competed, always pushed each other. You know, if there was something he did better than me, he would tell me a tip, and if it was vice versa, you know, I would do the same. But I think the biggest thing, you know, just, he played obviously multiple, probably what, 30, 45 games in his career. Um, the biggest thing that I learned from him was just how to handle success and how to handle adversity. You know, I think the, the compliment to him was he was always the same guy, you know, thinking about what I've had to do over the last 10 days. And I think of, you know, how I watched him do it. And he was always the exact same person, always had a smile, always, you know, was, was the same, you know, kind of uplifting to Leah that we all knew. Um, so I'd say that's just the biggest thing is, you know, he, he texted me, you know, multiple times throughout camp and, and before the first game. Um, and just reminded me, you know, how long of a season it is and just to take it one, you know, one week at a time, one day at a time, one game. Um, and, you know, I think he lived that out, you know, the two years that I was here watching him. So I think that's the biggest thing is just, you know, watching him, see how he went about, about his business. And, you know, season's a long season. It, it can get tough, but he just was, you know, he took it one day at a time and he kept kind of the same positive mindset he had. And that's, you know, something that all, you know, I took away last year's and that I'll like to try to do this year. Hey, Billy. Um, I know you always talk about one day at a time, one game at a time. Um, and this week, you guys are playing a Big Ten opponent, which is kind of early. Um, you know, how do you feel about it, kind of playing that conference game so early? Does anything change at all in the preparation, I guess, in terms of knowing that it's a Big Ten caliber team? It might be a little bit of a different type of game. Um, what's kind of the mental uh, mindset, I guess, going in? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, as Coach Loxley says, we're, we're nameless, faceless opponents. We're playing. You know, Michigan State obviously this week, but I think there, there isn't too much uh, of a difference in terms of my preparation or the team's preparation. Um, I would say, yeah, too, I would kind of think of myself as a young player here, right? Just being, I don't know, my third, fourth career start. Um, there's not much of a difference, you know, in my opinion, playing in Michigan State, you know, a big time opponent week two. Um, obviously, just watching the tape, you know, they're a good team, they're a great defense, played, you know, a very strong week one. Um, they have a lot of new faces, but I'd say for us, it's just, you know, it's the next opponent up on the board, and you know we got to go about our business the same way that you know we will all year and we have all year. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say there's too much of a difference. I think you know I'm sure that's probably more external the excitement of playing a Big Ten team, but you know not much of a difference inside the locker room. Bill, can you guys take us through the decision to transfer here and how much of, was being closer to home uh, a factor in that? Yeah, I would say. Um, you know, my freshman year at Wake Forest, it was like about a five, five and a half hour drive um, that, you know, my, my parents and my sister, you know, pretty regularly made. It wasn't the end of the world, but I knew that, you know, when I made the decision to enter the portal, that wherever I was going was going to be closer than that. Um, when the opportunity, you know, came here, obviously with my familiarity of it, um, known Coach Locks, Coach Enos, Coach Miller at the time, since I was 13, 14 years old. Um, and then the biggest thing, you know, what I always tell younger guys is, you know, college football's players' careers are always about opportunity, and there's a really good one in front of me here. Um, and, you know, just 35 minutes from home, I'm sure it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, so that was kind of, you know, the icing on the, on the top of the cake for that. But it was just, you know, the opportunity that, that lied and then the familiarity I had with, you know, University of Maryland already. Obviously, my brother worked here. My dad played here for two years. Um, and, you know, it was just, it was, a, it was a perfect fit. It was something, you know, looking back on two years ago, I'm, I, got, I got pretty lucky. I'm glad I made the decision. I'm glad, you know, it all, it all kind of worked out the way it did. But yeah, it was just, you know, opportunity and then obviously location close to home and familiarity with, with you know, what was going on here. Hey, Billy, two questions for you. First, how do you balance the, you know, letting yourself feel some excitement and kind of confidence coming off that first game, but knowing, again, it is just one game and it is a long season ahead and trying to keep that even keel attitude. Where, where's the balance there? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I would say life's all about balance. It's, it's, not, it's not easy to find that. Um, you know, I had a, I was texting Coach Locks' son Kai this weekend, um, and you know we had a text back and forth, and you know he kind of reminded me of the same thing you just said. It's one game, and, and it's good to to have that excitement and that confidence coming from it. But at the same time, he's like, you know, it's a long season, um, you know, and to continue to have the horse blinders on, and, and you know when it's all said and done here in a couple months, we'll look back at at what we were able to do. Um, yeah, I'd say there's there's balance, but I'd, I'd say I'd, I'd be more happy at the end of it if I. You know, had the mindset I do now, just taking it one at a time, and, and I'd be, you know, be able to look back and, and have less regret. Um, but it's hard, you know, especially with 
with all the, you know, the external factors, I try to limit, you know, my, my time on social media, my time reading stuff, and just, you know, really it's it's JHH, my apartment or nothing uh, when it comes to, you know, the season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's tough, but, you know, I'm excited at, you know, what we have inside the locker room, what we have going, you know, the season's a fun time. Everyone in that locker room is putting 55 plus hours a week into this game plan and, you know, putting their, their time and effort into us to go out there and, and have a chance to, to succeed on Saturday. So that's kind of what keeps me motivated is just to keep the main thing the main thing right now. And then when it's all said and done here in, you know, December, January, we'll all look back and, and you know, be able to enjoy what we were able to accomplish. One of your teammates who was a part of the win had a touchdown, Josiah McLaurin. Um, we, you know, we know what kind of week um, he had, what kind of two weeks of the tragic passing of his father. Coach Loxley talked about him and, and staying here with the team and, and having you guys rally around him. What did you see from Josiah and from your team and then to have that moment together on the field in the locker room after? Take us through what that was like uh, for your team. Yeah, first of all, you know, you just talk about that, I get chills. Josiah's, you know, one of the toughest human beings I've, I've been around and had to, you know, encounter that and witness that first person. Um, but I think, you know, the the decision he made to stay here all week, you know, I think was, you know, it was it was it was good for him. But I think it was better for all of us just to be around him and, and know that, you know, this guy made the decision to stay here. He's obviously, you know, he's going through something that, you know, very I can't imagine. I know some teammates, you know, have had that happen. But it was it was tough on us. But I think we all loved him up. Rob Smith did a great job, you know, taking him under his wing. Um, and just, you know, just being there as, as whatever we could do for him, you know, in, in the, the week leading up to the game to support him. Um, but yeah, you know, that Dante Trader gave him the game ball in the locker room after the game. And, you know, he said God works in mysterious ways. And I'm, you know, very happy. It was a very cool moment, you know, as a, as a player, as a teammate to, to witness, you know, him able to go in on his first collegiate game and get his first touchdown. Um, but yeah, he's Josiah's tough as nails. It was just, it was a really cool experience to watch that, you know, um, yeah, sucks, but you know we love Josiah. You know we'll we'll continue to be around him, and, and he's been you know like I said, tough as nails. Like he's been the same kid all week, and you know you obviously think to yourself, putting myself in you know in his shoes, it's it's hard. It's probably you know one of the hardest, if not the hardest things you know we can go through. Um, but yeah, he he handled it great, and you know it was like I said, I think it meant more to the team that we were able to be re be there for him and be around him um, for the week leading up to the game, and then for him to have you know the the touchdown on Saturday, I think you know that that made it all. You know, us feel good for him, um, and you know, I'm sure it helped him get get a few, you know, laughs and, and high spirits uh, with the week he had. But it was a tough situation. But you know, like I said, God works in mysterious ways, and it, it worked out well for you know for his first game. But we'll continue to love up on him, be on him, you know, how however he may need. But he's he's a he's a tough kid. Hey Billy, I was talking with Ty after the game, and he said at some point, I think in the second half, he came up to you on the sideline, said how proud he was of you as a guy that's followed you. Fairfax County growing up and, and in the wake and out of here. What's the bond that you guys have uh, between each other? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going into what year four college now. So I think Ty and I have known each other for about seven, eight years. Um, we played each other freshman year in high school, played each other in multiple seven on seven tournaments. Uh, but he was always a guy that, you know, even when, when I didn't come here out of right out of high school and, you know, he had committed here, he had, you know, a handful of offers. We always stayed in touch, always followed each other, um, kept in touch on the workout when we could. Um, and I think, you know, where we really got close was probably during COVID when I started, you know, going out to where he lived in Ashburn and working with the trainer, his same trainer um, that worked with him throughout high school. And then, you know, Saturday was one of many, you know, full circle moments to, to get into a game and to be the starter and to get the throw to him and see him have the success he had. Um, it was definitely, you know, he, he came up to me and he, when he, he shared that moment, but, uh, it, you know, it meant just as much to me um, to, you know, be a part of, you know, his success, um, knowing that, you know, we're, we're both two Northern Virginia guys coming from, you know, similar area. Uh, we're just trying to, you know, trying to help our team win. And it was, it was, you know, a very cool experience how we got to do it together. You know, we'll, we'll hope to continue to have that same success throughout the rest of the year. But that's, what, you know, it's pretty cool when you can do it with, you know, not many people obviously go and play college football, but when you got a guy that you've known since you were 13, 14 years old before you got recruited, before you got any offers, um, it just makes it that much sweeter. And if I could ask uh, Coach Locks a few minutes ago, asked or called you Leah, to Leah's brother's keeper in some ways last season, you know, you on time and get to practice. Is there a moment that kind of comes to mind of trying to keep him from not missing a, a meeting or a practice? Ah, uh, no, nah, I can't pinpoint one. I would just say, you know, having lived in Talia's shoes the last like seven, eight days, um, I can't blame him. It gets hard, <laughs> you know, with all the with all the time commitments. But yeah, I you know, I helped Talia out in some sense with that, but he helped me out in more ways than you know what I was able to give to him. So, but yeah, it was uh, we had a good relationship. We, we took care of each other.
Billy, Michigan State's defense, specifically the front seven, what kind of things do they do to make you guys uncomfortable? What becomes more of a priority against what the Spartans roll out? Yeah, yeah, I think the biggest thing is just execution. You know, they're a very experienced front seven. Um, they got some new pieces, you know, a linebacker um, and up front, you know, from the portal and whatnot, but they're very experienced, they're very stout. Um, they play the run well, they're physical. Um, you know, just watching the one game from FAU, you know, aside from any tape outside of that, they played the, the run really well and they got after that quarterback. Um, so, you know, I think the biggest thing with, you know, what Coach got us hit on yesterday and what we've been telling ourselves since Sunday when we started watching the tape was just we just got to execute these guys. We've got to cover them up, you know, allow ourselves, allow Rome and allow the running, you know, the running game to get going. Um, but they're, you know, they're a very experienced front seven. So, you know, we'll have our hands full. But I think, you know, our guys are excited for the challenge to, to go up against a different type of opponent. Um, you know, they run some, some different things up front than, than what UConn did. But, We'll definitely have our hands full, but I think we're excited for the challenge. And the offensive line, no sacks given up last Saturday, five plus yards per carry. Uh, how did the, the hole get to be better than the sum of its parts with five new guys in your opinion? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, hats off to the three offensive line coaches we have or the three guys that are working in that room, Coach Brass, Coach Robo, and Coach Ference. Um, and then I think, you know, tip my hat to the guys in the room because obviously it's tough with the landscape of college football nowadays. I think, you know, Andre Roy has been here. Uh, Isaac Bunyan's been here. He had to change positions, come back to offensive line. Josh Kaltenberger's new. Alu Ba's new. Allen's new. So there's a lot of moving parts, but I, I, you know, I give a lot of credit to those guys and their coaches for understanding that it, you know there was going to be a, a process of growing pains that you know we went through in the spring. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing is that room's pretty tight. You know, they're all they all get along well. Um, Josh, I spent a lot of time watching film with Josh. We're you know we take we're in the same graduate program together, so we spend a lot of time. Um, talking outside of here, but I think just the, the cohesion of that room and, and the growth that they've made on the field, but off the field, I think has helped them, you know, have the success on the field they've had so far. But yeah, they'll continue to, to get better and continue to grow closer. And I know they, they go out and eat a lot as linemen like to do. So I think that's helped them, you know, just, just become better friends, become, you know, better teammates. And, you know, up front, you got to have that, you know, connection because, you know, it gets, it gets tough in the trenches, but they've, they've done good so far. So you got to keep, you know, continue to do what they do and put the, their, their right step forward. Uh, Billy, last year, uh, first of all, congrats on a great game last week. Thank you. Uh, last year, we saw you start a game. You, you won the game. It was conservative, passing-wise. Then we saw you against Auburn, start the game, get a couple drives in. And then all of a sudden, this game last week, you're throwing left and right down the middle on the run and to me, it was uh, surprising, whatever, uh, that quick growth. What happened over the off season? Did you go to any special camps? Did you, you know, what made you grow as a passer off the off season? Yeah, I would say, I think I've always had it in me. Um, I think it was just about, you know, getting, you know, getting more comfortable in it. Um, obviously with, you know, been here two seasons and the nature of, of the games that I went in, there was, you know, not much time to get comfortable, whether it was a, a sporadic start here and there um, or, you know, coming in for, you know, short yardage, goal line packages, whatever the case may be. Um, but I think just, you know, the biggest thing for me this offseason was was more mental and, and knowing the fact, trusting the fact that I, I can throw the football as, you know, I couldn't run in high school, but I could throw and, you know, kind of the narrative changed obviously throughout my college career, but just more the internal confidence of just, you know, Last week in practice, I got after it, um, and you know I was very calm going into Saturday's game. I told myself it was like a Tuesday practice where you know I had made those throws countless of times. I had you know felt my feet on time and you know made the right checks, made the right reads. Um, so that was just the biggest thing for me. I think my growth in the off season of going into my fourth year, I'm an older player now. Um, you know, not making the game bigger than it is. I think you know other games that I come in previous, it was I got very amped up, very excited to get an opportunity to play. Where now it's just. You know, I'm always trying to be that, that level-headed guy and, and knowing that, you know, like Coach Loxley says, we got to get after it. You know, we got to put the, the work in Monday through Friday. And for me, that's the biggest thing is just having good practices. And, you know, I'm going to make mistakes in practice, but getting those corrected by the end of the week will, will give me all the confidence in the world to go out there and sat on Saturday and, and, you know, make those same throws. Hi, Billy. Congrats on the great